There's something about being out on a Sunday afternoon, isn't there? Just kind of relaxing, and we even have air conditioning in here. Isn't that amazing? My name is Randy Hamill, and I'm with the Paramount Theater. And on behalf of the board of directors and my staff and uh, everyone that's involved in this theater, welcome. Uh, this was kind of a last-minute uh, idea we had. Uh, if you saw the advertisement, it said uh, a 90th and 30th anniversary. And uh, the 90th is, uh, on August the 20th of 1929, we had our first concert here. Uh, how many were here for that? Anybody? Uh, and it was a movie, I think, called The Coconuts with the Marx Brothers. A year later, they had to shut the theater down. And it's been open and shut and open and shut several times until uh, the late 80s when the Paramount Heritage Foundation bought the theater for a buck and started renovating it, and uh, or restor restoring it, I guess is the right word I should use. Um, and I'm going to bring someone out here in, in just a moment to tell you a little bit about that. First, I want to share a few other thoughts. Uh, uh, this is kind of a kickoff, and the reason we decided to do this is we have some guests with us today. Um, they're called CIC ATOS, and it's a pipe organ group. And they've already, they just finished their meeting, I think, in the side room here. And they were bringing Dave Callendine in to perform. And I called uh, Mike Fellinger and I said, you know, we so seldom get to focus on the organ. I mean, we're having movies now and George is polite enough to come in and play before the movies. Um, but to just really focus and feature our organ, which is a unique organ, of course, um, is, is so seldom. So I said, let's just give one day to the organ. And so that's what we're doing today, and I appreciate you all coming. I know you'll enjoy it. Uh, how about a big hand for George Smith real quick? Uh, we can't say enough about George, because if we have a tour uh, or the movie or anything, I just, we just pick up the phone and George says, I'll be there, and he comes in and plays, because he loves playing this. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe he helped build it. But uh, there's been, uh, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. I want to say that at the end of this, of this afternoon, we're going to have two handouts for you. One will be, uh, there will be a green piece of paper that tells a little about the history and about the organ and about the train room and about the ballroom. Uh, we didn't want to give it to you right now because you couldn't read it in the dark anyway. But as you leave, be sure to get one of these green uh, uh, pieces of paper. And we also have a card with upcoming events. Speaking of that, next Friday night, we have 1964, The Tribute. Uh, it's a Beatles group. They've been together for over oh, 25, 30 years out of Vegas, and we've already sold, I think, 800 tickets, so it's going to be a fun night, okay? So if you want to come out and hear The Beatles, well done. Please do that. Uh, <clears throat> again, I'll, I'll, the handout will tell a little bit more about the theater, uh, the fact that John Everson was the designer and everything and how he liked animals and if you looked around you've seen animals in the side um, and uh, I wanted to also mention <clears throat> these people don't get enough credit um, as you know maybe you know uh, at the first of the year Jay and Nancy Ricker sold their stores and we had a mortgage of just just a tad under five hundred thousand dollars left from 25 years ago that we still had to pay. And Jay and Nancy wrote a check for $500,000. We were able to pay off our mortgage, uh, all but about four, maybe $5,000, uh, which we needed that too, of course. Uh, but there are also a group of people that we call the accommodators. And during the years that we had that debt, um, they were the ones who antied up whenever we had to pay a bill. Uh, and I'm not going to name them. I'm not sure they would want their names, but um, there, were, there, were sev there were seven couples and individuals who were called the accommodators, and some of them still pony up today when we get in jam, and we do still get in a jam here. Uh, but thank God for those people. They helped us keep this place going. And uh, our new relationship with the Honeywell Foundation out of Wabash, we're bringing in these groups. Uh, we're bringing them in, but they're paying for them. <laughs> That's a good deal, isn't it? And um, so uh, watch our website, andersonparamount.org. We have 
a wide variety of entertainment coming in now. Pretty affordable. Uh, it usually starts about 7.30 at night. Uh, so watch for that, and we try to get something for everyone. Of course, we still have the symphony. We have the ballet. Uh, we still do all of our other things, too, in our movies. We're showing a free movie as a part of our anniversary uh, on the... What's the date on that? Anyways, it's a week from Saturday night. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're... we're uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I think it's... Uh, what's the name of that? What is that going to be? You might remember? I can't remember now. Oh, it's uh, the Yellow Brick Road. What's that one? Wizard of Oz. It's going to be free. So everybody come and bring somebody with you. Uh, should be a fun night. Uh, a few other things are going on during that week. We just didn't have a lot of funds to do a big blowout for our 90th. Uh, the other part of that, the 30th, was when we started the restoration. It was a period of time between the late 80s and early 90s when we restored the whole building. Uh, and so I'm going to bring uh, Jim Abraham out here now. Come on out, Jim. Jim was the ramrod behind the restoration 25, 30 years ago, and he's going to share a little bit about the theater and what we're doing right now. Jim? Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, the generous welcome. Hard to imagine, uh, along with a number of you here, that it has been 30 years since we arrived uh, that night, in August the 25th, and we reopened this theater, uh, grandly restored the way you see it today. Some of you re shared those days with me uh, when it was a shambles. We couldn't imagine that we could bring it back to its glory, but we found individuals who were willing to help us financially. Uh, we found experts around the country, the decorative painters, the decorative plasters who came in and put all this back together. This building was designed along with about 150 similar theaters by the noted architect in the 1920s. His name was John Eberson. Eberson was an Austrian-born architect who was headquartered in Chicago. And he designed, as I said, about 150 of these theaters, similar interior decor, but a slight changes. Of today, there are only 12 of those theaters remaining. And this city is lucky enough to have one. Another one nearby is the, the great embassy theater up at Fort Wayne, and then they scatter around the country. Dedicated that night, if you will turn, and I'm not sure you can see, uh, Jerry or the lights maybe are up, sitting up here on this balcony. Can you see by the light? Do you see there's a bird sitting there? You see it? That's a peacock. Now, the peacock uh, arrived just before dedication 30 years ago, and the story behind that is that John Eberson, who you know, made this look very floral on the inside, when the lights are up even brighter, you may see some doves sitting around and things like that. Eberson would give to each of his theaters a peacock. Now, don't ask me about the political significance of how the bird died. I don't, don't know anything about that. Well, we wanted to recreate Eberson's uh, tradition. So we contacted a taxidermist in Louisville, and you see, I'm from southern Indiana, and that's how you say Louisville, you say Louisville, if you're a little further south. So the taxidermist provided us with the peacock, and we named it John Eberson. So we always know that John's still here. Eberson also had part of his tradition that on opening night of each of his theaters, he would give to the theater manager a bag of bird seed to take care of all of his birds. So the night that we dedicated, uh, Russ Johnson was then the president of, of our board, and I remember coming over here and giving Russ a bag of bird seed to take care of our birds. Well, they're still here, so Russ did his job and took care of our birds. Now, we got through the dedication. There was some work yet to be done. The ballroom had been opened the year before. We invite you today, by the way, to go upstairs and see uh, what's been going on up there. Now, you run it 30 years beyond. I have been in and out of the theater sometimes uh, during those 30 years, but for the last 20 years I've been living and working in Savannah, Georgia, uh, teaching at the Savannah College of Art and Design, uh, restoration work, of course, that's, that's my background. Just retired a year ago. So I've been here helping a friend of mine, and Ann, I can't see you, Ann, in the lights, but Ann and Bobette Snyder and Tom Snyder invited me to come over to the theater. They said, let's walk through with Randy, and let's take a look and create a checklist. You remember that day, Randy? Uh, maybe some things that need to be touched up. Well, I learned that almost a million people, think of that, 
Almost a million people have gone through this building in those 30 years. Now, for you who were here on day one, if you will hearken back, there were people in this city who said, why would anybody want to go to that old theater down, down there on Meridian Street when we were out trying to raise the funds, along with Leslie Davis and Mattingly? But since that time, a million people have gone through. Now, that's a lot of wear and tear. Nothing vicious about it, but just wear and tear. So we've created our checklist. Uh, I was hired to do uh, some limited amount of work, so I've been doing painting touch-up, plaster touch-up, floor repair in the ballroom, redoing the, some of the decorative work up there, trying to bring it all back. It's not tough, but it has taken a few dollars to, to, to do some of that. Uh, I know you can't see it except the users who are back in the back. Back there on audience uh, left in the far corner, you can see some serious plaster damage and paint damage. That was caused by a water leak, but that's been five or six years ago, and it hasn't been repaired. So now we have contacted the, the painting contractor and the plaster contractor who did all this work. They're still in business, now in the third generation families in Chicago and uh, Milwaukee. We have a price from them of about $40,000. And that seemed like a lot of coins, but that's what it's going to take to repair that corner. So we have the, the estimates put together and uh, we're putting together some funds. We're working with the historic landmarks in Indianapolis to help us as well. That needs to be fixed. Our visitors to this theater ought not come in and see that. We want it to look perfect. So that's our goal, to get that all done. Next thing that we're working on, I just was with Doc Shirley outside just a while ago talking. Doc Shirley was the one who made it possible for us to have the wonderful vertical sign on the front of the building that says the Paramount. Well, the marquee itself needs work. So we have about $7,000 project put together. We're replacing the broken neon on the, on the marquee. We're replacing all of the uh, bulbs with LED bulbs. Cuts down on operational costs and it's going to be a beautiful sight to behold and we hope to have that done by the uh, end of August. Ann Hardacre had been very, very generous to the theater in the past along with our friend Bill, but she also has been very helpful to us on the marquee. So, in the next uh, 60 days, Randy, we ought to have the marquee complete, the ballroom complete, stairwells have been repainted, and we'll be working toward putting together that project to finish it. We want this place to shine. We want it to go on to the next big anniversary, 100, that's 10 years away. I'm gonna be here, by the way. You're gonna be? I intend to be here for, the, for that one as well. So thank you all for coming and listening to my story. Uh, we love the Paramount. We urge the city of Anderson to continue to support help to maintain it, and enjoy the fine program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I will say one more thing. Uh, uh, when this theater opened in 1929, there were 10 theaters on Meridian Street. 10 theaters. Uh, we're the one that's left. As you may know, the city just bought the state. Not sure what's going to happen there, but uh, we're trying to bring the downtown back, okay? Okay, now uh, we're going to focus on this organ up here. I'd like to invite Michael Bellinger up here. He is with the local chapter of CICATOS. He'll tell you what that is. He will introduce the organist, and uh, you're going to hear, listen to all the different instruments that are up in these two chambers up here, okay? And remember, at the end, you've got two things we're going to hand out to you. I think there's a limited amount of maybe some snacks or something we aren't sure but it'll be over in the courtyard and our ticket office our box office will be open if you're interested in some of the upcoming events okay please welcome mike i mean michael fellinger here and he'll take it from now thank you thank you randy good afternoon and let me also add my welcome uh to all of you here today on behalf of cic atos or the central indiana chapter of the american theater organ society um, I would like to ask, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, CIC and or ATOS members, raise your hand so that our other Anderson guests can see us and recognize us. Uh, we are a small but very dedicated group to the preservation, restoration, presentation of the theater pipe organ and its genre. We own a couple of theater organs in Indianapolis, and we promote, promote theater organ across Indiana. Randy mentioned the 
page, uh, or well, he mentioned the embassy, which also has a beautiful page organ, uh, the Long Center in Lafayette, the uh, Warren Performing Arts Center, we have a Barton there, the Headback Theater in Indianapolis uh, has a Wurlitzer, and then Manuel High School uh, has a, uh, another Wurlitzer. And uh, also of note in Indiana has the only Compton Theater pipe organ in the United States. Uh, uh, they were done in uh, the United Kingdom, and one of our members, John Rust, purchased and has installed that in his home, which, by the way, we will be visiting in October. Uh, our local group is also going to be hosting the annual convention in Indianapolis next year. Uh, I would ask you, uh, we also have a handout, uh, so in addition to the two that Randy mentioned, we have a membership brochure. Uh, if you, when you, when we're finished, uh, when you exit, if you go to the left to the courtyard room, uh, as Randy mentioned, we do have some fre refreshments available for you and hopefully we can do a little so so socializing and uh, meeting some of you. Uh, if you have any interest in theater organ, and not just this one, but theater organ in general, uh, we invite you to uh, consider joining us. ATOS at the moment is running a promotion for new members uh, of only $25 a year, and then CIC dues are $18. So uh, if, if you have any interest, we invite you, um, come and check out one of our meetings, uh, come to, we do a concert series, uh, our membership brochure lists our website, uh, you can also see the website listed in the materials that Randy sent out about today. It's very simply uh, CICATOS.org. So with that, I will uh, move on. Uh, we are very lucky today, uh, we, and having a senior moment. Did we come in January or February? February. Uh, to enjoy this, again, beautiful surrounding, beautiful organ. And it decided to snow and not, I mean, snow, <laughs> snow, like we don't see very often. So we had a very low turnout. Uh, Randy called me and said, hey, why don't you guys come up again? And I thought, well, okay, Dave didn't have a very good audience, so we'll invite him back and see what we can do. And so we were able to work all this out. Uh, so I'm very pleased to welcome back uh, Dave Callendine, who also happens to be the ATOS president and a good friend of mine. And so we are pleased to welcome back Dave Callendine.
Good evening or afternoon. I'm used to evening concerts, I'm sorry. And I'm so used to, uh, for some reason, somebody has called my phone 20 times in a row and caused it to go off. So uh, I apologize for that. I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, but uh, it is a pleasure to be back. Uh, the last time I was here, we started and it was fine. By the time I got done, six inches of snow had fallen and uh, it was quite a fun drive back to Detroit after that. So I'm very happy to be here when it's warm. Uh, and I have to say, this is a wonderful organ and a wonderful theater. And uh, it is uh, so nice to come and see that uh, the theater and the organ has the support that it has. Uh, the opening number was Paramount on Parade, uh, very fitting for this place. And then the, the last march there was the Radetzky March, which is what I usually try to open up most of my programs with. Uh, we're going to step back in time now to uh, show some of the softer sides of the organ with uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, big band hits. Uh, well, I don't even know if it was technically a big band. Uh, I forget the year, but this is going to be... Um, and of course now the title just left my head, uh, Misty. Uh, 